Hi, my name is Emily Wells, and I'm an artist, um, musician, video artist from New York. I only know how to set up the experiment, not how to conduct it. The past informs both the grief and the hope. I would like for us to imitate the thing that knows what to do, which is a natural world. I'm just carving out a world for myself the best I can, you know? Hello and welcome back to Future Prairie Radio, where marginalized artists explore the future through the lens of the arts, humanities, and culture. I'm your host, Joni Whitworth, and this is Season 2, Episode 2, To Live More Closely, with Emily Wells. Today we're going to hear from artist, musician, composer, and producer Emily Wells, who's known for her varied use of classical and modern instrumentation. Her work bridges pop and chamber music and explores concept around human relation to the natural world rooted in a love for both. Her short films and projections weave imagery of contemporary dance, extreme weather, and effects of climate crisis alongside protest footage from the AIDS Coalition to Unleash Power, an international grassroots political group working to end the AIDS pandemic. Emily's latest album, This World Is Too For You, was released last March and has been hailed by NPR as breathtaking, mind-blowing, and visionary. I sat down with Emily before one of her performances for a conversation about art and the future. Hi, my name is Emily Wells, and this is always the hardest thing to do, but uh, I'll try to describe my work a little, which is uh, grows, I hope, always growing, but uh, always with the center around music and uh, moving interdisciplinarily into video art and always influenced by literature and uh, poetry and critique and history. Um, That's perfect. Okay. <laughs> and what are some of your favorite um, instruments to play or musical um, endeavors? Yeah, so I am a violinist by training and have been playing violin my whole life, so I kind of I often enter music through that lens, but, um, you know, I'm a producer, so I'm always trying to find ways to encounter sounds, and whether that's by finding the right people to play the thing really well, or by me kind of trying to find a way into different instruments, or, you know, I'm interested in synthesizers and drum machines and... Um, but I, I love acoustic instruments as well, so it kind of like to blend those. Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. Okay. Tell us what are some of your intentions for the future, both for yourself and then maybe as an artist and a community member. Okay. Um, a personal intention for myself and my work is to remain curious, and. Um, and not to be cynical. <laughs> and uh, I guess that kind of goes, it bleeds out a bit into my intentions around how I want to approach being a, a member of a community and an activist, um, you know, to just, to be, to educate myself and, um, but to be a force for uh, curiosity and, um, you know, wanting to be well, you know, we were talking about something last night, which is uh, the ability to experience wonder. And I think my way into wonder is often through experiencing other people's art, but it can also be, of course, through the natural world. That's like the best starting place, I think. Yeah. yeah. And, and what are you uh, working on these days? Any fun projects going on? Yeah, well, I... I put out a record that took a lot of time to make, to conceive of, and to create. Um, took like two years. It came out in March. And um, so you, it's almost like you, <laughs> you, come, you have to really come down from something like that, especially after taking it on the road. And uh, so my way of coming down from it was to um, gently hold each of the songs in hand by uh, making these really minimalistic recordings of them so shrinking them from this much more grand uh, arrangement into either an acoustic guitar or an electric guitar um, and a voice no other instrumentation so 
I spent my summer doing that and uh, perhaps also to avoid the project that I'm staring at now, <laughs> which <laughs> is ambitious in a different way, um, though I, I think it will also involve collaborators. Um, the initial concepts are around uh, creating songs and essays which are in conversation with one another, and s- some of the concepts are quite um, daunting, um, and there's like some darkness to them because they... They're examining um, how climate change crisis is related to AIDS crisis and um, the movements that came up around AIDS crisis and and just like looking at how we can learn from one from the other. And um, so those ideas are, of course, uh, they're hard ideas to think about on a daily basis. But um, so, yeah, that's what I'm that's what I'm looking at now. Wow. And and so you imagine it'll be maybe something like an album with a book? Yeah, I think or? so. I think so. Nice. Mm-hmm. That's really exciting. Yeah, and also daunting just from a practical standpoint of uh, having to be a writer, you know, <laughs> outside of writing new? lyrics. <laughs> I mean, privately, I've always written, but, um, you know, privately, so... Yeah. yeah, yeah. An essay feels more formal for sure. Sure, absolutely. But it kind of started because I there was a, an event that happened um, where an activist took his own life in uh, in protest of environmental injustice, and I was so struck by the act itself, but also by the lack of response to it. Hmm. Um, and so I I. I I had never written an essay before in like a formal way, but I just, I was almost like a, I had to do it. Not for anything other than just the act of sitting down and organizing the thoughts. So that's kind of how the whole thing began. But Wow, wow. Yeah. So that was kind of the genesis of the project. Exactly. Amazing. Mm-hmm. And, and what were some of the themes of your previous album, the one that came out in March? Yeah, well, so that album is a lot about uh, a human being's relationship to the natural world. Um, it's about um, facing your own apathy around um, the world in which you inhabit and take from um, and trying to reverse that. And um, yeah, and also uh, a willingness to have to look around instead of to isolate and a, a kind of this idea of community and needing one another that's it, the only way out of this problem you know of of um climate crisis and a lot of other problems frankly as well so yeah definitely yeah. do you find yourself thinking about the future when you're making your work uh yeah absolutely i mean particularly this album like in in it Again, it's a scary thing to live inside for a while. Like I have a song called Eulogy for the Lucky, which is kind of this idea of um, the earth shaking us off of, of herself <laughs> and what will, be, what will be lost in that and um, um, the sort of sorrow around that. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of, I think there's a lot of songs that are about... Um, looking at, at oneself and, and really seeing um, your place in, in the problem, yeah. you know, especially as an American and consumer. Definitely. And how all the systems, you know, that benefit us also are cutting us as well. Is there anything you would like to share with our listeners about um, your identity that might have informed your perspective on the future? So sometimes people are thinking of things like class or race, Mm -hmm. disability status, sexuality, religion, things like that. Yeah, I mean, I can't help but come through a a queer lens uh, at much of my work and much of the way I see the world, but also a queer lens of a person who was raised in a Christian household, um, who has a queer father, who didn't come out until much later in life. Um, Those things really inform my perspective, my worldview, um, of course, and yeah, can't get away from them. Yeah, (laughs) (laughs) definitely, for better or for worse. For better or worse, (laughs) yeah. Yeah. Could you tell us about some ideal futures, some some best outcomes? Mm -hmm. I mean... It's sometimes hard for me to picture, frankly, but I 
in I think it is a world in which um, we have a much more symbiotic relation to the, the natural world and you know I think that does involve a willingness to live more closely um, which sometimes is at odds with my desires as a kind of lo- loner type person totally um, same. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I don't know I think I could get used to it if it meant um, survival yeah yeah as long as there was like a bullet train into the forest or something <laughs> where you could go out into nature <laughs> yeah I mean I would just I would like um, for us to imitate the thing that knows what to do which is the natural world uh, more closely, and I feel like we're, as a speaking generally, we're quite detached from that way of being. Um, and all, obviously, all of the anti-capitalist things that need to happen, um, th- I don't need to repeat. You know, you could sure. just go to ElizabethWarren.com and sort of <laughs> suss it out <laughs> there. <laughs> Our recommended resource for further reading is <laughs> www.elizabethwarren.com. Thank you. <laughs> yeah what role do you think art plays in the creation of that future uh imagination i think is a big part of it imagination accountability um uh i think those are two for at least the work that i make i i think that's part of it and um the visualization of the past and then that bleeds over into that imagined future i think as well Tell us about your creative routine or process. Hmm, yeah. Um, well, when it's working well, <laughs> uh, it involves a fair amount of reading. Um, I usually am a, a fair amount of nonfiction, I would say, although I do love novels, and they're kind of more of an escape rather than an, a way in. Um, but all of those things are part of the process, if that makes sense. Um, sure. And... So, you know, I, 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 and I like to be in my body, so I'll go for a run or swim or I've recently gotten into rock climbing. Um, Mm, and so, yeah, (laughs) so, uh, if I can get into my body and out of my head a little bit, um, and then it allows me to enter other people's work. I find like entering other kind, other forms of art is always a spark for me. In unexpected ways, um, it's like uh, there's so much there for us, you know, it's just opening ourselves to it and um, getting outside of a habit, not being open to it, you know, I think that's part of the routine is creating um, a way in. And then, um, yeah, uh, then you kind of just can, through that, it's a way into the work itself, um, making the work itself and... um, it's such a strange, you know, walking into the space, wherever it may be, of, of, of writing the, the music. Um, there's always a barrier that you have to kind of cross. And, um, and then when you do, you can really, really lose yourself in this way. That's, but, and also meet yourself. You know, it's, it's quite profound. Um, and it's difficult to describe, I don't think... I just, I only know how to set up the experiment, not how to conduct it, if that makes sense. So um, the conduct, the conduction is just being inside of it. And of course, you have to rely on um, <clears throat> skills you've picked up along the way, you know, uh, whether it be the technique of playing an instrument or uh, software or whatever. And those are just like there for you. Uh, so you've got to nourish those as well. Um, so that they will be there for you in the moment of oblivion, you know, but yeah, that's how I get in. Yeah. I, I feel the same way completely. I'm primarily a poet. And so Mm. finding my way into a poem is, is like that where you finally, you're like, what am I doing? And then Mm -hmm. at one moment it's like, Oh, here we are. And then you're just weightless. Yeah, (sighs) totally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, is there anything you've learned about making music that you apply in other areas of your life? I try to uh, think about that in terms of trusting the preparation in life. Um, certain things you know work, even if you don't feel like doing them or 
they're difficult to get into, like just trusting, like if I open this book or if I enter this um, this talk or, or whatever, then like that's a way in. So I, yeah, I, I try to trust um, certain boundaries that you set. It's not, I think in art it's easier than it is in your personal life. Unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, I found that to be true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you have any certain audience in mind when you're making your work or uh, like a certain market that you find really, really connects with your work? Markets, maybe the wrong word. Audience. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I definitely th- want thinkers, you know, to like get in there with me, people who are interested in um ideas you know that's really that's the audience that I wish to uh, draw in the most I guess um yeah um and do you find do you have any special certain moment from um a feedback from experience like that where some some think are really connected with your art <laughs> yeah there's this poet named Mary Rufel um who it's more that I'm connected to her her art. This, she's written uh, a few books of poetry, but she wrote this book called Madness, Rack, and Honey that's a book of lectures, uh, but loosely, I mean, they could be spoken, but they're, the ideas are, it's just so brilliant. And um, I, I wrote her a letter to tell her how much um, that book meant to the record and sent her the record. And we've begun a small correspondence, uh, and she it's just so lovely her way of communicating it she's like from another planet or something but um she she sent me a book and put a a drawing um of something from the record cover um inside and another thing that she wrote to me was that uh musicians are lucky because they get to use the word play and the rest of the artists have to keep it a secret so um yeah, that kind of interaction. I mean, that's once in a lifetime, I guess. But Absolutely. It, it, uh, that's, that's the ultimate, right? Someone you admire, uh, getting to engage with them around work. It's amazing, yeah. Yeah, that's a, it's a beautiful observation, the freedom of play, and mm. being able to claim that. Um, <clears throat> this is more of a fun question about the future. Okay. If you could invent any new object or tool or structure or system, what would it be? Oh, man. I mean, I guess maybe I, I would want to remove, d- uh, like, a tool that could remove distractions, um, particularly those of, like, digital nature. Mm-hmm. So a way to, like, close yourself to that itch, you know, and uh, really be inside of something else experiential. That's my invention. Cool. Cool. Um, what advice would you have for emerging artists? Read, um, listen, and uh, just, yeah, stay curious and trust that uh, I think, at least my experience has been just this, I'm just carving out a world for myself the best I can, you know, and um, that's that is the goal is to, the ability to continue to carve out the world that there's not some plat- like reaching a plateau is the end you know um and that's what keeps the uh, that's what keeps the work interesting is um the ability to keep growing so um that's the goal you know it's continual definitely yeah and uh when when should we expect your album and essay collection um <laughs> <laughs> uh, probably 2021 great yeah that's a perfect timeline yeah (laughs) well under uh president elizabeth warren right oh my goodness well (laughs) yes what a celebratory occasion (laughs) maybe you can play the inaugural yeah (laughs) right i was there for the protest so yeah be there for the inaugural as well Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm, okay well, thanks for thank the you for your really time. thoughtful questions. Of I've course. enjoyed chatting with you. Yeah, have a beautiful rest of your weekend, and I can't wait to see you play later. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. If you'd like to see and hear more of Emily's work, go to emilywellsmusic.com. You can also see photos and a recap of our interview up at futureprairie.com forward slash magazine.
Future Prairie is sponsored by Square. Square helps millions of entrepreneurs run their businesses with secure credit card processing and point of sale solutions. A number of our artists are using Square to sell their prints, books, and merch. Find out more and get free processing on up to $1,000 in sales at squareup.com forward slash I forward slash future time. This episode was also sponsored by the Arcosanti Urban Laboratory. Thank you to our production assistants, Natalie Nelson and Jillian Barthold, and to our sound engineer, Matt Larimer. <laughs>